share my thoughts on planning excellence, which for a lecturer is very short, so I'll do my best. Um, I wanted to start off by showing you my campus, so that's the Potchefstroom campus of the Northwest University. And I thought to start off with a quote by Nelson Mandela that said, education can change the world. But I do want to challenge the quote today to say, education is changing the world. And especially, we see in higher education, that's where the magic is happening, in teaching and learning and this new generation of students. So, some thoughts on teaching excellence and how education is changing the world. So, I'm an urban and regional planner. We like pictures of the city and we teach our students about cities and layouts and all the complexities of urban living, rural living, etc. At the same time, we are very much aware of all the dangers in higher education training. So, these dangers being time, as you know, there's not enough hours in a day. Outputs, we need research outputs, community outputs, the output list just grow and grow. And then to top it all off, we have this Generation Z student that now fills our classroom. So it's a challenging environment for any lecturer to be in. And I think that is why most of us, <laughs> we recognize these faces. Um, it's challenging. And then, in preparation to this presentation, I came across this uh, picture on the internet. The professor is in Mary Poppins with her magic umbrella. And I think that's what we try to be, right? We, we try to do this magic and come into students' life and just give order and fun and just make everything better again. So, I want to stand still, Mary Poppins quote, everything is possible, even the impossible. So I found a friend, how do we do this? Okay, how do we become a Mary Poppins in the higher education? And this friend, Albert Einstein, said, I never teach my pupils, I only attempt to provide the conditions in which they can learn. So I thought, okay, this is interesting, I do not teach, I provide conditions for learning. So taking that back to our urban planning class and thinking about the theories and how we usually sit in a class and transfer knowledge, how do I change that to actually co-create knowledge? So for me the answer was, I have to take my students out of the class. I don't need to teach, I have to provide the conditions. I guess I need to take them out of the class. So I employed experiential learning, part of the social constructivism theories, where you learn through doing. So you need to have the theoretical background, of course, but you learn through doing and through the reflection on doing. So in basic layman terms, we played apprentice in our model. So the students were divided into groups and they all had their own brand and identity and Facebook profile, etc, etc. And they, as a team, went through different scenarios, different teaching setups, different classrooms, different stakeholders. And of course, the challenge of this was, I still had my model outcomes. So it's not as if you can just reinvent your model. There's model outcomes. But apparently the art is to think creative about your assignments and to adjust the assignments to be more creative and be more challenging. So reaching the model outcomes, but in a different way. So just briefly, some of the assignments. We first had a site visit to Lego City. Now Lego City is a proper Lego City. Thanks to our sense of teaching and learning, we now own a teaching tool, Lego City. And you won't believe it, that students actually engage fully on replanning this city according to theoretical principles. So instead of me just telling them and educating them on what's the theory, they actually negotiate with one another how this city should be planned. And then they go and they make a video, and it's like a, a tender where you go to the municipality and you present your ideal Lego city. So there's some soft skills, some Generation Z language in there. They really engage and they really excelled in learning these theoretical principles. The second assignment we did was the environmental one and um, a really basic, simple thing. We went and we cleaned up the Moy River. So the student said to me, we are urban planners to be, why do we need to clean? In 40 minutes, we filled 40 black bags full of rubbish and waste and needles and all the bad things you can imagine. And then they realized there's a problem with our environment and we as urban planners need to do something about it. So I can tell them about all the papers that's been written about sustainability and how we're not going to reach our global goals. But if you see that and if you feel that, 
you realize the penny drops. Okay, so then we did the third one, city transformation. So what happened here, the South African um, Day organization contacted us and said, we're going to do a whole city transformation, basically like the Hannon makeover show, but for cities. We said, look, it's fine, we're in. So this, the students actually wrote a whole document for Kulini, and the second year we did it for Kashet Park in Pochestruk, to say, this is what we think you can do. So the students call it the power wow document, the powerful wows of what a city can do, what residents can do to really better your own environment. So again, a theoretical take on it, but with an actual practical document being delivered to communities to change that communities. And then lastly, we compiled all of these social, economic, environmental studies and exercises and we contributed to the UN Habitats International Document for Urban and Territorial Planning. So we actually Skyped with the UN, we presented them with the case studies, they included it in their handbook, they even invited us to Japan to come present some of these case studies, and again, a third year class having an output for the UN Habitat. So that was quite impressive. For me, in essence, experiential learning, so the way you take your students out of the class, that is where the magic happens. That is where you get this Generation Z student to really engage, to really want to be in class. So that's where I think the Mary Poppins umbrella comes in. Okay, so trying to be Mary Poppins, experiential learning is the way to go. At the same time, I can tell you about the new case studies that we captured. Um, I can tell you that the magic lies within papers that's being written from this teaching approaches. Um, all the different conferences, international invitations that we got, even really good statistical feedback from the students. Okay, so there's a lot, a lot of, a lot of um, data supporting this magic. But for me, that wasn't the real magic. So the real magic for me laid in three things. I think we really succeeded to go from thinking global and acting local to really apply what theory says in our local communities. The second thing is, I think we mastered to teach beyond the classroom because we engage with so many stakeholders and different ages and races and languages. It was incredible to see communities collaborating with the classes. And then the third thing I think what's the most magic of this approach is that you get to inspire. You get to inspire a young generation, you get to inspire communities, you get to inspire municipalities. So I want to show you a short video that was made in Kubini um, on one of the projects that the students did. Slow burdens. Okay, so this is in Kulini. So there it goes. We see a lot of towns in South Africa that are almost collapsing. Kulini was a perfect opportunity for us to showcase what can be done in terms of us working together with the business community, with everybody. We don't necessarily have to rely on government, we can do it ourselves and in partnership with everyone. The lecturer said to the class, this is what Kalini looks like now. Go and think of what you think the community can do to change it. They arrived this morning at the bus all excited and ready to come paint and to come transform Kalini. And it's all voluntary, there's no assignments or marks or anything connected to this day. And they were all excited to join in and to come make a difference. And I think it's such a good story to tell, to, to say we've got a young generation that is really willing to put in their own time and effort to change a town for the better. And that is actually what we need in our country. realized that they have a very valuable role to play in the broader community. In terms of urban ecology, we really focus on the smaller and the medium sized cities because they will grow because there's quite an increase in urbanization worldwide. From a planning and also an ecological point of view, uh, we would like to become involved in more projects all over South Africa in terms of uh, smaller and medium sized cities. By fixing one's community, can one also uh, inspire investment to come here? But with these efforts, by mobilizing investment in the right places, by mobilizing community uh, efforts uh, in the right place, South Africa can come together and become a more prosperous and more successful country. 
the most important lesson that can be learned from it is that we should never underestimate the power of a small change. Okay, so I think that's the, the main message is never underestimate the power of a small change. But with that is educating the mind. Without educating the heart is no education at all. And I really felt that and I really saw the results of that. So education is changing the world. We see it in our spaces being transformed, being from bad spaces going to livable spaces. We see it in South Africa. This is just a picture of Ikaheng, an area outside of, of Pontchester. 24 hours later, child-friendly space, only by student input, no budgets, no, no nothing. Students willing to give their time, transformed this area and made it a, a child-friendly space. So we see our students really being active collaborators in our um, cities. Education is really changing the world. 74% of my students chose to do this for their research project or sustainability, not because they're so much interested in, in sustainability, but because they see the value of really acting and going out. We see this in newspapers. We saw this in all the collaborators that um, supported us in this project. So we really went behind, beyond the classroom. And then finally, uh, even the Japanese government sent us a Christmas wish. <laughs> so for me, it's three things. It is from global to local. How do we really get that message across? How do we really make a difference locally, beyond the classroom? It's not only our students. It's far more than that. We can make a difference in our communities. And then lastly, we need to inspire. We are in the game to inspire. And that's, that's our main aim, according to me, if you are aiming for excellence. Thank you.